Welcome to the Parable of the Pipes video demonstration series. The Parable of the Pipe video series provides valuable lessons about successful venturing. What does it take to start, operate, and grow a successful venture? What does it take to lead one? What does it take to contribute to its success? Successful venturing may seem to be very complex, but it's really not. The essentials are simple. It is ignorance of the essentials that make things hard to understand. Lack of knowledge undermines progress. Inside the venture, it creates variability in work results that lead to waste. It increases risk due to unnecessary excesses. Outside the venture, unevenness in product quality or service or delivery undermines the venture's reputation. The parable of the pipes demonstrations present and underscore the essentials of successful venturing. The audio and video content of the Parable of the Pipes demonstrations are deep talk like Maya Angelou's poems. On the face of it, the demonstrations are simple. You'll appreciate the storyline. However, each demonstration has themes underlying the story which suggest what founders should consider to build a successful venture. When you dive deeper into the stories, and explore their meaning for your situation, that is when you'll find what is necessary to make your ventures successful. Welcome to the sixth demonstration in the Parable of the Pipe series. In this demonstration, I'll use the pipes to demonstrate an important way to increase capacity, which is known as demand management. The Parable of the Pipes demand management video demonstration is the second of four related demonstrations about capacity. The four videos share valuable lessons concerning venture growth. Successful venturing is challenging even on the small scale. As your venture gets into revenue and begins to run smoothly, questions arise about capacity limits. Do you remember this video clip? It doesn't fit. Darn, what can I do? What do you think? Is the only answer to use a bigger pipe? The big pipe approach makes the job easy. Let's begin by considering the four questions from the last demonstration. Why is it very risky to use the big pipe? The big pipe has four components. First, the pipe is big. Even if it's not new, it will cost you more than 15 cents that you paid for the small pipe. The additional money you invest to buy the big pipe ties up more of your savings in your venture and immediately reduces your investment turnover. Reduction of investment turnover is stressful. It will make you and your investors nervous. Second, the big pipe is different from the small pipe. It'll take a little extra effort to tilt it. You'll have to learn how to tilt it and aim it correctly. Third, while you learn how to handle the big pipe, you may inadvertently punch holes in it while you learn to use it. You may need to pay others to teach you to use it and maintain it. Meanwhile, your investment turnover remains slower than before you bought the pipe. Fourth, you will also have bigger exposure to market risk. If customer purchases slow down, you will still have an awful lot of money tied up in the bigger pipe, while the slowdown in sales makes your investment turnover rapidly drop further. The drop will also put further stress on you and scare your investors. Stressing yourself and scaring your investors are bad things. Let's try another approach. If the quarter doesn't fit, 
How about sliding five nickels down the pipe at regular intervals? This approach creates a steady flow of nickels. The steady flow represents a uniform load schedule. Generally making a profit is easier if one has a steady flow of work than if one has an erratic flow of work. Everybody knows what to do next. A steady drumbeat of value. Added and profits. It's an easy tune to dance to. Also, you tie up less capital making the 25 cent order while you're working on the job. Maybe much less if you can collect payments for early deliveries and reinvest the nickels to make later deliveries. Imagine reinvesting the same five cents five times to make 30 cents rather than investing 25 cents once to make 30 cents. Over the same time, if you achieve this, does your investment turnover go up? You bet. Whoa, wait a minute, not so fast. Didn't the customer replace the big 25 cent order with the desire to get it all now? Isn't fulfilling big orders what makes you a big time supplier? Usually the answer to both questions is no. You may ask yourself why your customer doesn't want to lower his or her investment turnover ratio any more than you do. Your customer knows that tying up his or her cash in inventory that won't sell right away will lower investment turnover. Think about it. Consider three maybes that might cause your customer to prefer a uniform delivery schedule. Maybe your customer is reluctant about giving you the big order today. Maybe what he or she needs is to make sure the goods will be in stock when his customers will want to purchase them in the weeks leading up to the holidays. Or maybe your customer is making the big order to get a quantity discount. If you can convince your customer that your uniform delivery schedule will be reliable and that he or she will still get that big order discount, you'll have a shot at convincing your customer to accept a uniform delivery schedule that matches your uniform load schedule. A nickel at a time produced and delivered to a steady drum beat, a smooth flowing schedule that you can handle with your little pipe. We call this type of negotiation demand management. It's time to pause and think about what we covered in this demand management video demonstration. We have covered many essentials. When you reach the end of this video, you will see a slide with four key questions. Pause the video at that point. Write down the questions, then write down your answers. Remember, the parable of the pipes demonstrations are deep talk. When you view each video, you will probably say on the face of it, one understands that. However, keep asking yourself the question, maybe there's something else, something deeper that will make my ventures more successful. For example, did you observe how the orchestra conductor approach was used to integrate uniform load scheduling with demand management? If you don't see the connection to your venturing, you better view the video again. Check out the supporting materials of the Parable of the Pipes book. Talk it over with your venture partners. We now offer you four questions. Please pause the video when the question slide appears. Write down the questions and your thoughts about each question. Let's try another approach. If the quarter doesn't fit, how about sliding five nickels down the pipe at regular intervals? This approach creates a steady flow of nickels. The steady flow represents a uniform load schedule. Generally making a profit is easier if one has a steady flow of work than if one has an erratic flow of work. Everybody knows what to do next. A steady drumbeat of value. 